Welcome to another post-game media edition of Talking Hoosier Baseball. Today is Sunday, March 12th, 2023. Uh, Today, the Indiana Hoosiers wrapped up five games in five days with five victories, this time in a pitcher's duel, defeating Bellarmine by a score of 3-2. Indiana pitching gave up zero earned runs on the day. Starter Seti Manasi went 4.1 innings. Uh, relieved by Evan Whitaker, who went 2.2 innings, earning the win for the day. And Ryan Kraft picked up his fifth save of the year, uh, going uh, 2.0 innings. Uh, He did give up the two unearned runs, uh, but did manage to close out his fifth save of the year and his third save of the week. Freshman second baseman Tyler Cerny uh, paced the Hoosiers with three hits on the day. Uh, he also had some fantastic work with the glove, as did Josh Pine, who had a fantastic grab at third base. Uh, the media today met with uh, Cerny plus head coach Jeff Mercer following the game. Um, it wasn't always uh, picturesque. It wasn't always beautiful, but there, there is a, a resiliency. There is a toughness to, to, to sweep, a, especially a four-game set against a team that can hit and had some had some good arms in there mixed in. So anytime you, you, you win four or five games in a row like that, you, you've got to do some things right. And, uh, and, and and it's good. You get a lot of different guys in there. You get Devin Taylor in there. You see some of those young arms. And and I, I just was really impressed with, I would rather not play close games, but if you do, the, the ability to have some resiliency and have some toughness and have some, you know, kind of some, some nerve there at the end and pull them out. So it was, it was, it was nice. I'm really happy for them that they get to experience it. Um, but, but it really does set us up nicely as we move forward that you know you, you've got the kind of the toughness to, to play and win in those games. Talk about your defense on the last couple of plays that saved you with those gra- two nice ground out plays yeah. or we might yeah. be talking a different game where it's yeah. tied. Yeah, yeah we, we've, we've tried really hard in recruiting to, to recruit the level of athlete that can defend. And then in our, in our player development, we spend an, just an inordinate amount of time to, to be able to play a higher level of defense than, than we have. And, and just for games like that, sometimes you just don't hit and sometimes it's cold and the guy has your number for whatever reason. And you're just going to have to pitch it and play really good defense. And, you know, outside of the outside of the one error to begin that inning, we played terrific defense over the course of the day. Really, really good defense. Tyler Cerny's was was terrific. And Brock Tibbetts is I mean, as good as it gets at first base defensively. So um, it was <clears throat> it was a focal point of ours to be able to defend at a higher level. And, and at points and times in this season, we really have. We've really shrunk the game. We've made the game smaller. And with with Crafty, the way that he the way that he executes, he's the ball, guys are going to hit balls awkwardly with kind of the ride and the cutter change up, uh, curveball that combination. There's a ton of swing and miss, and when guys do hit them, they don't square them up very often. So you're going to have to make some some unique plays, and, and we were able to do that at the end. How relieved are you? We were talking about this in the press. Like you've got guys now that can heat innings and get get yeah. low scoring games you can win these low scoring games yes. like last year where everything was high scoring now you can win yeah. three to two or yeah. Yeah. or higher scoring if you need to how nice right. is it to have guys that can eat those innings now and it's 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 critically winter. important it's critically important you know i liken it back to, to two years ago when we had one of the best pitching staffs in the country you know we we pitched really really well here for 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 multiple years and obviously last year we didn't and so getting back to what we do and have done well uh it is <laughs> Is a staple of the program and needs to be. This needs to be the expectation, not not the other way. And and, uh, and obviously the draft may, you know impacted those things. But it's great to be able to have guy after guy to roll out there, to where you can you can limit a guy like Ryan Kraft to a very specific role. Hey, the game's on the line in the last two innings. Uh, you you got the ball right because you have you have length from guys like Evan Whitaker and and Braden Reisdorf and Connor Foley and and Aiden Decker Petty and Ethan Phillips. Those young guys have really given us a, a boost. You know, a really good start from SETI today, kind of back to what we expect from him. And, and yeah, it's it, we can come at you in waves now where we don't have to we don't have to overexpose guys too often. And, and we can really keep our stuff at a, at a premium level, pitch the matchups. It, it, it changes the course of the, of, of the season. It really does. You have had some difficulty this season in, in getting to good starters. Um, is, is that something you're concerned with at this point in the yeah. season? I mean, I, yes and no. I mean, it's we did yesterday really well, but we we didn't the other two days. Um, we just need to get more guys going. Right right now, what we have is like we've got we'll have three or four guys going and then a stopper, and then we have three or four guys going and then a stopper, and we just need to have consistent at bats throughout to where 
you're going to line out, you're going to have a good at bat, and something something negative is going to happen. What we have to have is we have to stop the like the the terrible at bat in the middle of two or three good ones. And there's there's some physical changes, but a lot of it's just pitch selection and approach and. I think expectation has something to do with it. I think trying to do too much. Um, hey, I've done this before. It, this is going uh, to, I'm just going to jump back on the horse and do it again. And it's just when you've, when you've never done it and you learn how to do it, you do it for the first time, there's no expectation. And there's not really any stress because no one expects you to do anything. When you've done it before, now you fight a whole different internal battle of how do we get through uh, expecting, knowing that we can be very good, knowing that we should be very good, and expecting ourselves to do that, but I'm not currently doing it. And then I press, and then I swing out of the zone, and then I make mistakes, and then I hit into a double play, and now the inning's over, and now we have eight innings to play with, and they have nine. And so that's what I see a little bit of, and, and it was really good to see us go yesterday like we normally do. Um, and that guy was kind of how we train, right? And sometimes it's hard when when you, you face a guy that maybe isn't in your in your training you know regimen, but that guy was really in our training wheelhouse, and, and we, we handled him really well, but yeah. We just we just gotta settle settle in. We had some guys that are just pressing and trying to do a little too much and swinging out of hand. And every time I get in a leverage count, it's an auto swing and just that stuff. We gotta string them together more. Um, I th I do think we'll get there. Tyler had three hits today and also made uh, some really good plays yeah. in the field. Um, kind of seemed like he was almost outdoing himself every single play. From yeah. Your vantage point in the dugout. Yeah. Did you share that same type of feeling watching him? Yeah. You know, I, I, Tyler is a terrific player. Very talented, very gifted. He's he's worked hard. You know, he he's got a chance to change the game every game that he plays in, uh, and and he did that today. You know, when when he's when he's doing his work, when he's uh, you know uh, prepared, there's nobody that's that's more talented than this. There's nobody that's um, has a chance to, to to help us to go on both sides of the ball more than he does for us. Um, and so I you know I'm very proud of him. He's done a great job. And and. You know, it's it also is a testament to, you know, where he came from as high school coach, his summer ball, all those kind of things prepare a guy to be able to come in as a freshman, earn a job, and then play really well within that job, within that, and, and to impact a really good team. So, been really pleased with him. We'll take two more. Um, with SETI coming out, um, obviously had that had that uh, lead off base runner. Yeah. Um, was that more third time through the yeah. order? Or? Yeah. Just just purely third time through the lineup. And it's just, we don't have to, we don't have to overexpose him. We don't have to go into the third time through the lineup. He was kind of one way or the other, he was done. I would have preferred him not to walk that guy. But definitely once he walked that guy, and then their, their leadoff guys kind of was their, was their engine. I mean, he's, he could really hit, hit the homer yesterday. It's a one-run game at that point. Like, we're, we're not going to give him a third time. Statistically speaking, he's over two at that point. He's due, he's due to get steady. I didn't want, to, didn't want to give up a two-run homer. It didn't spoil a, a really good outing. So you go to Evan Weidecker, different, totally different uh, metric profile, fastball, different breaking balls, two different breaking balls with a change. Like He's totally separate from SETI and thought that was a good matchup and it ended up working out. Matthew Ellis's last at-bat was critical, and it critical. kind of felt like he was – he looked like he was not happy with himself before that at-bat. So yeah. can, can you walk through what you saw on that yeah. one? So I, <clears throat> I had talked to Matt. So right now, Matt's getting going through like the typical, I'm talking about yesterday. I get fastballs away until I hit them, then I get breaking balls and I get fastballs in. He's on the fastballs in and breaking balls away, right? So he has to do one or the other. He can't get blown up by a fastball in and then take the, get me over breaking ball away. And so in his previous at bat, I thought about bunting him, but it's a fifth inning and I'd prefer not to bunt with the runner just on first base in the fifth inning. With a guy that at any point, we've all seen him go like be on fire. We've all seen him take off and carry an offense for half a season. So I want to try to get him back in there and do that. Um, and I and I, I told him before his that last at bat, I said you, you've got to either hammer the off speed, get me over off speed pitch away, or you have to you have to be aggressive to the inside pitch. Even if you get beat, like you're so strong, you have to have bat speed and you have to have strength to power through it. And you hit a, you hit a ball to the right field line, you hit a ball to the right field, but you can't just half halfway attack both pitches. And to his credit, you could see a difference where he, he got, really got started on time. He took the off speed pitch away and sat more on the inside pitch, I'm sure. And then he and he and he turned on it and he swung. And again, just like Glasser yesterday, when you have good posture and you have aggressiveness, you can have success on the inside of the barrel. Glasser does it more to the other way, but you know uh, Matt was able to do it to right field. And I'm hoping 
him, he's been sick. He was actually in the, in the, he was hospitalized uh, just with the, not not terrible, but like just the flu when he was really sick was a Friday night, and so we gave him the day off on actually on Thursday night, Friday and Saturday gave him the day off, and so he was kind of sick today, but it's still like hey, let's let's get up and get going here, and, and let's have some aggressiveness and some bat speed. Nobody can cover all 17 inches of plate with all different speeds, and that's what he's doing. That's what he's done. He's just covering too much of the plate, and when you do that, you don't cover any of the plate. And uh, hopefully we can get him, get him going a little bit because obviously as we've seen him, he's been terrific in the past. Because uh, we'll start with defense. Um, you've had, you had some pretty impressive plays out there today. So how did it feel for you? What, what did you feel was working for you? Uh, I mean, yeah, making those plays feels great. You know, I've always prided myself on the defensive side of the ball. I've always had a great glove growing up. And so I've just really worked on just in practice, all those plays, like the sliding play. I, I love that play. That's like my favorite play to make. Um, so whenever I get that one, I'm, I know I'm going to make it. And then, so yeah, I'm really that, good to make it. Sorry. Um, on that final play, as the ball bounces, it's a tough play. What's going through your mind right as it bounces to Brock? I mean, you get scared when you throw it like that. But you know, when you have Brock Tibbetts over at first base, you know, you kind of feel more relaxed. Like he's going to pick that ball. Like, I have so much confidence in Brock throwing the ball over there that if it, wherever I throw it, he's going to pick it. So I love having him over there. So with the bat today, um, and you've been showing the bat really, really well recently, not just today. Um, you know, how Are you just seeing the ball really well? What, what's working for you? Yeah, there? I mean, yeah, I'm seeing the ball pretty well. I think I've done a good job at being on fastball timing, especially today. Um, I got lucky the first at bat. I kind of got up front on a slider. I got through and then the next three at bats, I was on the fastball, ready to hit it. And, you know, I've been working on the cages, doing drill work. Uh, so that's really prepared me. And then, yeah, that's. There has to be some level of just, you know, you're, you're in, you've got a bunch of veterans around you fighting for playing time. There's got to be some stress that comes along with that. How do you deal with the stress? Um, you know, every day you just, you're fighting for a spot. You know, you're, uh, you're trying to, Play your way on the field, you know, earn that spot, and everyone's doing it. So, and for me, it's a lot of uh, it, my teammates having a lot of confidence in me. That really helps me perform. I think, you know, like the last year up the middle really helping me there at short, and so that's really, really, really good for me right there. You just talked about, you know, having to work to earn your starting spot. Obviously, go for it. Got the first couple starts. You kind of worked your way into the lineup, batting well. How much harder is it? For someone like you to have to work your way into the lineup, given you weren't on opening day, be yeah. someone who is. Yeah, I mean, go forth is my best buddy. You know, we love each other. Uh, no matter who plays the day, we're gonna cheer each other on, obviously. So, um, yeah, just every day, you know, just coming out and performing, and having a good day. You know, that's it. Um, you're a newcomer on this team, and it seems like whenever you play, that you're having so much fun. Um, on the field, what's 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 maybe been the most fun part of playing on this team, right, as you pick up a sweep? Yeah, I mean, having fun is the name of the game. You know, if you're having fun, you're going to play well most of the time. You know, I love these guys. I, I have so much fun with them being out there. So I just try to enjoy every moment and make the most of everything. Next up for the Hoosiers is a 5 p.m. Tuesday uh, first pitch uh, at Lexington, Kentucky against the Kentucky Wildcats. Uh, thank you for listening to this post-game media edition of Talking Hoosier Baseball. See you at the BART.